मृत्यु जरा एंड व्याधि इन द भगवद गीता कृष्णा से फॉर वन हु टेकन बर्थ डेथ इज सर्टन एंड इन बिटवीन द पिलर्स ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ we will always have to undergo some form of disease and if we are fortunate we will undergo old age the fact of the matter shastras tell us is that death is as much a part of birth as birth is a part of death and death is the culmination of another factor in this material world that you and i cannot avoid and that is deterioration from the moment we are born we are already deteriorating our cells are growing and then they are dying nobody says that they are 21 years young everyone says we are 21 years old and the older we grow the more aware hopefully we are of the inevitable process of deterioration the buddha was passing through a village when he sat down to give a satsang and everyone was seated around him and he was speaking from underneath a tree all of a sudden a lady came and she was holding a dead child and her name was gautami and gautami came to buddha and said that master i've heard that you have great powers to rejuvenate those who are gone my son has died prematurely and therefore i am bereft of his association please somehow another bring him back the buddha smiled thought for a while and said i will bring him back but you only have to do one thing go around this village for the day and beg for mustard seeds the only condition is the mustard seeds that you beg from must come from a house that has not known any form of death in any generation if you do that gautami i will bring your child back gautami was filled with hope and she took her child and she moved around by the evening everyone had left and gautami came back this time she did not have a child with her and she fell at the lotus feet of buddha and she said master i have understood the purpose of why you asked me to move around for the whole day because as i went to every house and i asked them for mustard seeds people gladly gave me that but when i told them that the mustard seeds must come with the condition that there has been no death no loss of life in this house no one was able to do that and then i realized that everybody has experienced some form of touch with death whether through their loved ones or through those whom they have known and then i came to realize that the tragedy that has befallen me is the tragedy that befalls all when we love someone very much and we care for them deeply and eventually they must leave us this lesson from the buddha is very powerful for those who are alive and that is why shastras tell us that we honor those who leave best if we understand the value of life while we are alive you know in bhagavatam shukadev goswami asks this very interesting question do the not do do not the trees exist that's his first question do not all the trees exist the secret second question he asks is do not the bellows of the blacksmith do they not blow in and out and then he says all around us don't the bees live eat mate and defend it's a very powerful verse because what he's asking is what is the difference between human life and any other form of life a blacksmith has a bellow and it is moving our lungs are also like bellows but if our lungs and the ability to speak is not used in the chanting of the holy names and in remembrance of the lord then what is the use of that then he says the trees also exist we also exist the trees have maybe a lower level <clears throat> of consciousness but what is the point of our higher level of consciousness if we are not using it for the true purpose of life and he says the bees eat sleep mate and defend human beings also eat sleep mate and defend the only difference is we do it all in a more deluxe and sophisticated fashion but ultimately stripped of all that we are the same 
So until we understand the value of life, that there is spirit, and spirit is equally, if not more important than matter, and that spirit will continue while matter goes, then we would have understood the value of life. Then our perspective of life changes, the way we see things change. We will accept that that which has come today must leave us because by nature it is temporary. So that is why Bhagavatam says, the best way to honour those who have lived is to live well ourselves and to live with a greater purpose of understanding what is the true purpose of life. So Gautami left not feeling very discouraged. In fact, she became enlightened. Enlightened. That's why Sastra is very direct. Mahabharat, you all know, Yudhishthir Maharaj was asked this question, what is the most wonderful thing in the world? And he replied that the most wonderful thing in the world is that every day someone is dying, but those who live actually believe that they will live forever. That is the greatest, most wonderful thing in the world. So Sastras are very consistent. They consistently use the opportunity to remember a loved one by constantly using that opportunity to also remember what we should do with the remaining days of our lives. How are we going to spend it? What are the things that are important to us? When we see our loved ones leaving and they've spent an entire life serving us and spending time rearing us and helping us, we must also learn from them how we should live our lives. I understand from Supriya Mataji that your mother was such a great devotee. She had always been intimately connected with ISKCON. She'd been connected with the movement. She's been connected with bhakti. That is how we should live our lives. And this connection should not be on a ritual basis. It should be from the heart. That is the purpose of devotional service. Krishna is not a fool. We may chant so many things. We may do so many things. But if our heart is not in it, then he understands that it is not bhakti. So putting our heart into it, will inspire those who have left, inspire them in their onward journey, and it will also inspire those who are alive. That is very important. Chitraketu Maharaj was another glorious king from Bhagavatam, and his son died prematurely as a child. He was very distraught, and Narada Muni came and spoke to him. And after speaking to him, he found that he was still very distraught about the departure of his child. So Narada said to the child, he summoned the soul that had left the child to come back again to the child. And the child woke up and Narada told him, look here, your father Chitraketu is waiting for you. You have come back by my mercy. Now continue your life. And the child said something which changed the life of Chitraketu forever. The child said, which father Narada? In which life? Which father? And in which life? We have had fathers so many lives, mothers so many lives, wives, children so many lives. The amazing thing is you cannot remember them in your past lives. You may have loved them so much. You have said, I love you to so many different wives and husbands and daughters and sons and fathers and mothers. But you cannot for the life of you recollect what happened in the previous life. So this was a very powerful message to Chitraketu Maharaj. And he woke up from his slumber. And instead of spending more time in the kingdom, he decided to devote his life to understanding the true purpose of life. So therefore, Bhagavatam tells us that when, when someone who is dear to us departs, if you really want to make their life valuable, how they have lived, we must understand the purpose of our existence. And the purpose of our existence is very nicely stated in all our scriptures, whether it is in, in the Bible, in the Quran, in Bhagavatam. Savai pumsam paro dharmo, yathor bhakti radok saje, ahai tuki aprati hata, yayatma suprasidati. Suprasidati means to be satisfied. Yayatma means your atma. So Bhagavatam tells us that we have many dharmas. Mataji, your dharma has been to be a daughter. And you've been a wonderful daughter, and that's your dharma. Many of us have, have dharmas to be um, experts in whatever work and vocation we are doing. We also have our dharmas as sons and daughters and husbands and wives and workers and whatnot. 
But Bhagavatam says, above all these dharmas, there is one thing known as paro dharma. Paro dharma means it is the domination, the domination of all dharmas. And that is yathor, bhaktir, adoksaje, that we render devotional service unto the Supreme. That is our true dharma. And this devotional service must be performed in two ways. Ahaituki, apratihata. Ahaituki means it must not have any material tinge of motive. Sometimes we come for, to Krishna, help me in this, help me in that. But we don't realize that our network of karma has already put us where we are. It is better to ask Krishna for bhakti than to ask him for anything else. Because anything else that you ask will leave you. But bhakti is eternal. Why ask for shards of glass when you can ask for diamonds? But the problem is we don't understand the value of bhakti. And we think that everything else which is material is actually valuable. If it was really valuable and it belonged to you, then at the point of death it will go with you. But nothing goes with you. Even your sharir cannot go with you. So what is the point of all this? So therefore Bhagavatam says, Yathor bhaktir adok sajay, ahai tuki apratihata. The more you perform bhakti without material motive, then that bhakti becomes ahaituki apratihata. Apratihata means uninterrupted. It will not be interrupted. You can continuously perform bhakti. No matter how much difficulties there are, whether you're busy at your work, whether you have so many obligations, your bhakti continues unabated. Unabated. It's very important. So that focus must always be there. And that is why when we have such events happening in our lives, we truly honor those who have departed by understanding the true value of life and practicing it. That is very important. So by mother's mercy, she has brought all of us together to chant Krishna's names. This is not an accident. Someone who is not pious cannot, cannot create such an atmosphere even after they have departed. If they are not pious, then none of these things will happen. You will celebrate it or remember her in a different way. But you're remembering her in the way that she would have liked to be remembered, in a spiritual way, because she was a spiritual person. So you see, how you have lived your life will determine how you leave your life. It will also determine the consciousness by which others remember you in also. And this is the greatest investment as parents, as as whoever you are, <clears throat> you can leave for those that you will leave behind. This is very important. So please, let's chant Krishna's names. Mm -hmm. And in that way, the memorial will truly be something that will really help mother. In Sastras, it is also stated that as the soul leaves the body, if you read the Garuda Purana, the soul leaves the body and in the first three days, the soul's journey, right, becomes more and more defined. By the 16th day, by the 30th day, the path of the soul has become very fixed. If the soul has lived a life of sinful activities, then Bhagavatam has very elaborate descriptions on the different parts of the world, different parts of the universe that the soul must go through to undergo whatever it has to. But if the soul has been a devotee, then that path is also complete. Krishna protects those who chant and remember him. He never leaves them. It doesn't matter if one is an animal or a human being, uh, anyone who does any kind of service, even if they are conscious or unconscious of it, Krishna still helps them. Krishna is known as Bhava Grahi Janardana. Bhava Grahi Janardana. That means one who takes the essence of devotional service. It doesn't matter if you cannot do something but if your mind and your heart is with it, even then Krishna takes it. You all remember the story of Bali? Bali was tied by Vamandev because he could not fulfill the three steps that he was supposed to give to the Lord. Now he was tied up, but he wanted to offer obeisances, pranams to uh, Lord Vamandev. But he could not because he was tied. So Bhagavatam tells us he offered that pranams in his mind. But because he was so sincere about it, Krishna accepted that pranams as if he had physically done that. And therefore Krishna is known as Bhava Grahi Janardana. So despite whatever limitations we may have, if our heart is with Krishna, 
then Krishna always reciprocates. Ye yata maam prapadyante tam tataiva bhajami aham. To the extent that you surrender unto me, to that extent, I will reciprocate with you. So mother must have surrendered very much to Krishna. Because so many days after her passing in Singapore, we are still remembering Krishna because of her. And this is an opportunity that only devotees can give others actually. So please chant for the next few minutes and the names of the Lord. Say a prayer for the soul of mother. And pray to Krishna to keep her always safe at the soothing shelter of his lotus feet. Hare Krishna.